Well, hello everyone, and uh, thank you for your desire to be here today as we gather together in this first Sunday of December, first Sunday of Advent. And uh, as mentioned earlier, we're going to talk about hope today. You know, it... Uh, Different Advent studies, uh, some start with different words, but uh, you know, there's, no, there's no rule that says what word you've got to start with. I think there is a gen general consensus that you end with love. And uh, I did run across one that uh, ended with love on Christmas Eve. But let, that left another one, and, and so on the fourth Sunday of Advent, they inserted trust. And I thought that was an interesting choice. I uh, don't know that I've ever heard that before, but it uh, seems okay to me. But today I want to talk to you a little bit about hope. Um, When you consider the word hope, I think uh, I, maybe I have a, a different, maybe a, an interesting take on it because from, from the moment I was born until today, I've never been without hope. I, I've never, I don't think that I've ever experienced a day when I would consider myself in the category of hopeless. Now, that doesn't mean that there weren't times in my life when other people may have had that opinion of me. Uh, but from my own personal understanding, belief, and my outlook on life, I always have, have had at least a glimpse of hope in my life. And that's not something that I take for granted. It's not something that I take lightly. I, I, I consider that a, a valuable part of my, of my life. I, and I think some of that comes from uh, having two parents who loved me, who cared about me, they believed in me, and, and they, from a very young age, the earliest that I can remember, they instilled in me that I could be whatever I wanted to be. They, they instilled in me to have aspirations to do great things, whatever great means. Everyone has their own definition of it. So I, I always felt like in my heart, even through the tough times, that I always felt like I had hope. And that's something that I hold on to today. I can tell you that, and you've heard me mention this before, and I won't bore you with the details, but there was a part of stretch in my life when I really felt like that I was going to be alone for all of my life. I felt like that even though I knew that God heard me, I felt like His answer was, well, you know, you're just destined to be alone. And I was, I was getting to the point where I was just about to give up hope of ever finding someone to love me like I love them. And just when it got really dark, Mary Jean walked into the church. So, I don't want you to think for a second that I haven't had some dark days in my life when there was just a glimmer of hope. But the fact of the matter is, uh, Hope has always been there for me. You know, I think of life in general. You know, a lot of people get 
hit out of nowhere with just life. It's that diagnosis from the doctor. It's that phone call that rings at 1 o'clock in the morning. And you get bad news. A week and a half ago, uh, Mary Jean called me during the day and uh, told me about the passing of my cousin. Just boom. Out of the, out of the blue, Julie was gone. But life, in general, is, is tough. But you know, that, that's the reason that we need one another to support us, to help us. That's the reason that we need Christ in our lives. That's the reason we need God in our lives. That's the reason we need the, our church family in our lives to help us get through life because it will wear you down. I woke up this morning all in all feeling very well. Ronald asked me how I was doing. I said, well, I'm doing really good except for this pain I've got in my kidney where I don't have a kidney. i got a pain over here on the left-hand side right where I had the kidney stone before, but i got no kidney there. I don't know what it is, but it's just something. <clears throat> I should have took something for it earlier, and I'll get chastised for that on the way home. But I guess Mary Jean's tired of asking me have you taken anything for it yet? And I thought about that while they were lighting the Advent candle. But you know, other than that, I was doing pretty good. But, you know, it's just one of those things. But you know, life will get to you if you let it. From time to time, I'll present to you a lot of different statistics. Most of the time, those statistics are negative. But every now and then, we'll get a, a bright light. But just statistics in general, the way that they're presented in the media and in different places are usually discouraging. Uh, don't hear a lot of statistics being positive, but they, but they can be. The news in general, uh, if you sit down and watch a 30 minute newscast, about 27 minutes of it is pretty much negative, and then the last minute or two they have the feel good story of the day, trying to stick something good in there. And, and they're always great and wonderful, and you hear lots of great stories, but but in general, if you, if you just measure the news that we hear today, how much of it is positive, how much of it is negative, I don't have the statistic for you, but I think it's mostly negative that we hear. Sensationalism creates readers and sells papers. You know, the United Methodist Church today is going through what I would say is, uh, is a little bit of turmoil. And I'm talking about from a worldwide organization of the United Methodist Church. You know, we've gone through a, a, a couple of conferences over the last few years. Uh, General Conference 2020 is coming up this summer in Minneapolis. And our annual conference is coming up at the end of May, 1st of June. I don't know the exact dates, but... Um, you don't hear a lot of really positive stuff coming out from the world of United Methodism. A lot of, uh, a lot of negativity coming out about it and the stories and the, what's going to happen. And just like I read earlier from Matthew, nobody really knows what's going to happen. 
But you know, I want to I tell you, and I've told you before, and I'm going to tell you again today, I'm really proud of our church that we have not been caught up in all the hype. All the, all the busyness of all that's going on in the United Methodist Church. We've been true to serving God and worshiping Him like we're supposed to. We're not, I don't think any of us, at least I hope not any of us, lays awake at night worrying about what's going to happen. Because I can tell you the hope that I have uh, in the United Methodist Church and in Horton Bend United Methodist Church stems from my relationship with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and in God Almighty in heaven. Whatever happens is, is going to be His will for us. Whether we meet in this building or somebody's garage. Don't really know. And it doesn't really matter. But in all, life, statistic, the news, United Methodist Church, religion in general, uh, gets to stand. It can. It can be very discouraging, disturbing, unsettling, create waves of anxiety if we let. I want to read to you from Isaiah chapter 2. First chapter of Isaiah. He, uh, he calls on the nation of Israel and their rebellious nature. Steps on their toes. Tells them what all they've been doing wrong. But in chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, says this. It says, this is what Isaiah son of Amos, Saul, concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established. As chief among mountains, it will be raised above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us His ways so that we may walk in His paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will, bear, they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. God bless the reading and the hearing of His Word today. <clears throat> you know, this writing of Isaiah comes just after he had told the people of Israel all the bad things that they had done. This is a message of hope for them. See, Isaiah put this in here because of what he had written in chapter 1. They were going to be exiled. They were going to be conquered. And they were going to be taken off to a strange land. Now, eventually they would come back. They'd rebuild the temple that we studied about this morning. There in verse 2, it says, In the last days. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, Bible scholars look at it in two different ways. Some people look at it as the, the time of Christ starting the last days. Some Bible scholars look at the return of Christ starting the last days. And 
And what it actually really means doesn't really matter to us today. But we just know that in, in spite of all the bad things that happened to the, to the Jews in their day, despite all the things that are happening to us today, there's a hope that one day that mountain is going to rise above all mountains. That there's going to be our Lord sitting on the throne. And all things are going to be made right. You know, it talks about the swords and the plowshares and the pruning hooks. You know, it's kind of a backwards what was written over Joel. <clears throat> You've heard me say in the last year, and I've kind of reflected back, you know, when I was born in 1962, you know, that, it's hard for me to really wrap my head around if that was only 20 years after Nazi Germany and Hitler. And in my mind, even growing up as, as a young boy in the 60s, that seemed like ancient history. You know, really not until recent years have I just really grasped that concept. Well, it wasn't too long ago. Let's see, I, I know there's a couple of folks that were alive during, one, uh, during World War II. I know there's one. I don't know that anybody else lived through World War II. But, you know, I, I can remember growing up in the Cold War and having that fear of, of being invaded. At that time, it was from Russia. <clears throat> and today, even though we live in a time right now, arguably, the United States is enjoying the, the greatest prosperity at least from a financial standpoint that we've ever known. Uh, I, I, I don't think any of us go to sleep at night wondering if somebody's going to kick in the door speaking a foreign language. There's always that possibility of something bad happening. I, granted, but... You know, for the most part, I think we, we lay our heads on our pillows at night and, and, and we have a reasonable expectation that we're going to be safe. But I don't think even the, the, the security that we feel today compares anything to what we're talking about here in Isaiah. You know, there's going to be a time when... Peace will be all over the earth. And I don't know about you, even though things are pretty good right now, and I can tell you there's no other place on this world that, in this world that I would rather live than where I live right now. But there's going to come a time. I mean, I have that real hope that that time is going to come. Maybe even in our lifetime. Maybe a thousand years from now or ten thousand years from now. Nobody knows. We read it this morning. Nobody knows when it's going to come. But we have a hope that one of these days there's going to be a time when nobody trains for war anymore. There's not going to be a need for that. Man, kind of sounds like the Garden of Eden, doesn't it? But it's going to be eternity. And that's the way God planned it. And that's the way God wants it. Y'all know that uh, Andy Andrews is a favorite author of mine. He's written a lot of great books. And th this was a quote uh, from one of his books, The Final Summit, that I have not read yet. But th th uh, this was really neat, and I want to share it with you today. It says, Hope is the captain of courage and the author of success. 
For the person whose hope remains unshaken has within them the power to do miracles. Hope sees what is invisible, feels what is intangible, and achieves what most consider impossible. Hope sees, it feels, it achieves the invisible, the intangible, and the impossible. Now, Andy is a, a man of faith, and, and a lot of that hope that he writes about is hope in God, hope in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, in, in our world that we exist in today, where is, where is your hope? Do, do you have great security and confidence in where you stand with God? Where you stand with Jesus? I'm sure that, uh, as I've said many times, I'm sure if we're all honest, we could all do better. But I want you to know today, in this season of Advent, this first Sunday, the Sunday of hope, that uh, you know, even though all of us, or one of us, may get some bad news tomorrow. You know, God is there to help us through. Your church family is there to help us through. But I want to tell you that we can't help you if we don't know about it. I got a phone call last night about 8 o'clock said, Ray Max. Well, I thought to myself, this probably isn't good. Because Ray, he didn't call me to talk about the football game. I knew that. And sure enough, Dana was sick. And he asked, he says, I'm sure that I won't be there tomorrow. I'm going to be taking care of her. So let's, let's pray for Dana because she's sick. And, and I want to tell you that uh, that I thank Ray. I said, Ray, thank you for letting us know. Because if he hadn't called me, we may not have known. I, uh, I am so thankful that I don't have to face tough times alone. I know that I have each one of you for support and even beyond you I've got the, the spirit that watches over me I've got my Savior that walks with me and I've got my God who loves me and cares about me so I don't believe even if I turned out to be the character of Job in the Bible, I don't think that I would ever be without hope in my life. It's something that I've got instilled in me, and I don't believe that I'll ever lose it. At least I hope I don't. If you would, let's bow our heads while Sherry and Pat come forward. We're going to sing number 174. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we... Thank you for the hope that we have in our relationship with you through your son, Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would help us to all maintain that positive attitude that we have because of our hope in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Number 174. <clears throat> His name is one. <clears throat> we'll say it for one time.
Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit abound in our lives and keep that feeling of hope burning all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.